Now, Joshua Maponga is really angry that most African children actually study European history in their schools in Africa. It's really interesting how this could mix because he's arguing that many Africans today do not know about the history of Egypt, do not know about the history of their ancestors, but they understand more about the history of, um, you know, the Roman Empire and many empires in Europe without understanding the history of the empires in Africa that actually defines Africa's history. Let's listen to what he says about this and I'll be back with some really interesting analysis. The impact of colonization is brainwashing, using religion, using education, using entertainment, to create different role models altogether. Here now our children being taught Casper and the Friendly Ghosts, Tinky Winky. They're being taught, um, you know, uh, Snoopy Dogs. They're being taught the Seven Dwarfs. They're being taught oh, William Shakespeare, Julius Caesar. Even when they go to school to study their own history, they don't study their, their history. They are being taught to study their history. It's not about us, it's about them. So you go to school, you're being taught about Napoleon Bonaparte, Charlie Mains, the Bolshevik Wars, you know, the, the, the industrialization, and etc. And you wonder where in do you even study about Kemet, the building of the pyramids, the Great Zimbabwe, the Benin, you know, technologies and, and so colonization has a very intricate, subtle way of playing around the minds of the black person and making them less than they are, than they know, than they deserve to be. And the impact of that results in neocolonization, where even when a black person is now in power, he does not remember where he's coming from, but he remembers where the white man wants him to go. So our present governments right now are there to enforce the same principles of what the colonizers were doing. So you come from the war, you've been fighting, the liberation struggle, liberation, liberation. But the day you are liberated and you lift up your hand to be sworn in as a president, you are swearing on the white Bible. You are swearing into the white parliament that they built. You are swearing on the constitution, on the literature that they are giving you. And you are going to an office that the white men used to sit on. So your ministers and ministries are simply driving the same agenda. The laws of mining have not changed. The laws of land have not changed. The laws of indigenous medicines have not changed. In some certain countries, the laws of indigenous medicines actually fall under witchcraft, the Witchcraft Act. Now, how do you begin to say you are liberated when in fact your liberation has nothing to do with liberating your land liberating your kings, liberating your culture, liberating your diet, liberating your, your celebrations. And so in your towns, you still find these big white men standing as statues. Your cities are still being called by the name of the colonizers. Your rivers is the same thing. And then the borders, oh wow, the borders are still exactly where they were. As Leopold put them, then the question is how civilized, how liberated, how independent are you when your independence now is no longer independence, but it is dependence? You depend on what? Donor money. You depend on grants. You depend on loans. You depend on the same colonial system to help you to build your... Now, where have you ever seen that happen? That the person who colonized you will help you to build your own country when, in fact, it has always been about them building their own spaces. Yeah, really interesting. So what do you guys think? I think for this video, we'll be taking our analysis from a report I found on the dailybeast.com explaining why the Florida Department of Education actually banned African-American history, you know, um, you know, in its school. So it says that the Flor Florida Department of Education says it banned AP African-American history because it teaches students about activism, intersectionality, and encourages ending the war on black, trans, queer, gender, non-confirming, or intersex people, according to the document the department sent to the Daily Beast. It says Florida Governor Ron DeSantis rejected a request from the college board to provide the class in high school classes in the state, in the state Wednesday. The move comes in the same week the far-right Republican 
who a judge just ruled violated free speech laws by firing a prosecutor for being woke, requested info on trans students from universities statewide. So it says that the DeSantis administration further made their anti-LGBT stance known in their, in, a, in, a, in their explanation for prohibiting the class simply listing black queer studies as a violation of state law. A representative of DeSantis said the now banned class lacks educational value and historical accuracy in the statement to the Daily Beast. The department also takes issues with topics advocating for reparations, a movement with the goal of helping recipients overcome generations of human rights violations. The document admonishes the teaching of intersectionality, claiming it is foundational to critical race theory without explaining how. There is no critical perspective or balancing opinion in this lesson, the document says, of one topic devoted to the reparations movement. The inclusion of acclaimed author Bell Hooks in the topic Black Feminist Literary Thought is also cited as a problem, apparently because Hooks used the phrase white supremacist capitalist patriarchy. DeSantis hasn't been shy about his anti-woke stance, passing the Stop Woke Act in 2021, which banned the teaching of critical race theory, even though the government failed to prove it taught in public schools in the state. The Department of Education says it is willing to reopen the discussion if the college board can provide a class that abides by state law and is historically accurate, although the department's statement doesn't provide specific details on what the class teaches it, that it's historically inappropriate. So anyway, this is um, the ca one case from Florida, okay? But um, like Joshua Maponga complains, um, there's a large history, um, you know, in Africa that's really not taught in Africa. Um, there's a large history of Kemet. There's a large history of... Um, there's, there's one uh, author I f came uh, across. Um, I think his name is um, Ben, ben Jochanan. He's, he did a deep study on the history of Egypt, you know, Kemet and you know I think those dynasties in G Egypt had really interesting deep histories. There are a lot that Africa could learn from today, especially in terms of political systems, um, origins and arrangements of democracy, and especially now that Africa is actually fighting for its own form of democracy and all that we could actually learn a lot from these past histories, past histories from um, the Songhai Empire, the Mali Empire, the Ghani Empire in the 10th to 14th centuries there about really deep studies into this. Although the likes of um, Chancellor William has actually made efforts to write about, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, the destruction of black civilization. There he touched about how these empires organize themselves and how they organize society in that regard. We'll be doing a lot of those analysis on this channel. And but it's one way in which Joshua Maponga wishes that many colleges and schools in Africa could actually go back to those histories and deepen education in those histories to be able to allow us, to be able to allow Africans especially, start building and developing an indigenous form of consciousness that can actually help them form and create original forms of thinking, original forms of political structures, original form of economic structures to help them escape what seems to be uh so what in nigeria it speaks about how going 10 steps forward and 40 steps backward so to speak and so this is one challenge that you know probably education in africa might need to take note that um the history of africa uh, would need to be really uh, prioritized in schools in colleges in in africa that our african pupils would need to be able to tell a lot about their deep history of their ancestors about their forefathers about their empires the empires that came before them rather than really being lost and having their feet planted in thin air uh, without a adequate understanding of where they come from so this is Joshua Maponga's argument, and it's quite valid in that regard but what do you guys think what do you guys think about his speech share your thoughts in the comments.